When you spin a top, it doesn't fall over. Fascinating, right? I will explain the science behind this. How can spinning tops improve your balance? This is the University of the Netherlands. Can you balance on a tightrope? Maybe even high up? Probably not. Very few people can do this. Balancing is a very challenging task. At TU Delft and the Erasmus MC, we look at ways to improve balance and we exploit something called the gyroscopic effect. What is the gyroscopic effect? You probably know it already from playing with the top as a kid. If you spin a top, you will observe that it stays upright for quite a while. It doesn't fall over because of the particular type of movement it makes. And this is caused by the gyroscopic effect. We will now take a closer look at this effect and also how we can exploit it. You experience the gyroscopic effect also if you have a fidget spinner. If you spin the spinner and then try to tilt it about another axis, what you will observe is A, this costs you some effort, and B, it will start rotating about all sorts of other axes in a weird way. This is due to the gyroscopic effect and it can be explained by Newton's second law. If you want to change the velocity of an object, you need to exert a force in the direction of this change. Velocity describes the speed and direction of motion of an object. In a very intuitive case, if you want an object to go faster, you exert a force in direction of the intended change, so forward in direction of movement. For example, the force of gravity acting on an apple. If I drop this apple, it will go faster and faster while it's going down because the force is pointing in direction of the movement and it will constantly cause a change that makes the speed of the apple higher and higher. But changing velocity does not always mean going faster. It can also mean changing the direction of motion. A very nice example for this is the moon and how it orbits Earth. Is the moon going faster and slower? Well, not much, but it is constantly changing its velocity, namely the direction of velocity. And why is it doing that? Well, because there's a force acting on it, the gravity of Earth. Force and velocity are both vectors. Vectors are quantities with a magnitude and a direction. Earth's gravity, so the force of gravity, pulls the moon towards the Earth. The moon's velocity, which is per perpendicular to this force, prevents the moon from just falling to Earth. Instead, the moon is orbiting. If there wasn't any force, no gravity, then the moon would just go straight ahead, away from Earth. This is actually Newton's first law. We can visualize this with vector addition. You see, the moon is changing its velocity. So after a little while, the direction of velocity has changed. And this new velocity vector can be seen as the sum of the initial velocity vector plus the change. The change is also a vector and it points in the same direction as gravity. If you have a larger velocity, then also a larger change is required for the same orbit. Okay, now we come to the gyroscopic effect, which is also just about forces changing the direction of motion. And it's very visible in spinning wheels. And it can also be explained by Newton's second law. I will now do an experiment with a spinning wheel for which I need an assistant, please Sophie. I will try to stand on this platform, which can rotate about the vertical axis while holding this heavy wheel, which Sophie spins really fast. Now, if I tilt this wheel about another axis, in this case, a horizontal forward pointing axis, thank you very much, Sophie, then what, the, what you just observed is, I will start rotating about the vertical. This is very strange. The wheel was rotating about an axis pointing to the right. I tilted it about an axis pointing forward. Why am I suddenly rotating about the vertical axis? Well, we can understand this better if we look at the simplified model of the wheel. Here I take a lighter exemplar. So what we do is we look at this wheel as just consisting of two sticks and four point masses connected by these sticks. And the most interesting point masses which we will look at now are the ones here in the front 
and here in the back. And now what's happening is, well, the wheel is spinning and I'm tilting it about this forward pointing axis. Let's look at what these two points do. This point very much on the front is going up at a really high speed. And this point on the back is going down with a really high speed. If I am now tilting this wheel, what I'm doing is I'm forcing this point to change the direction of its velocity. Instead of just going up, it's now also going a little bit to the right. So there was a change in velocity to the right. And because this velocity is so high, it's spinning really fast, also this change is really large. We know if there is a change in velocity, there has to be a force causing that. So there has to be a force in the same direction of the change, so pointing to the right. If we look here at the back, this point is going down really fast. If I'm tilting the wheel, what happens is this point will be forced to move also a little bit to the left. So it's moving diagonally now. Since it has changed its velocity a little bit to the left, and this velocity is so high, also this change is very high, there has to be a force pointing to the left, causing this change. Now we have two forces here, one in the front to the right and one in the back to the left. They have equal magnitude in opposite direction, so their sum is zero, but they are at a distance from each other, which allows them to form something called a force couple or a free moment, a pair of forces that tries to induce a rotational motion. And in this case, you can see a rotation about the vertical axis. So we have the wheel axis, that's the first axis. We have the tilting axis, that's the second axis. And we have the effect, uh, which is actually the gyroscopic effect about the third axis, which is perpendicular to the first two. This vertical axis happens to be also the axis of the platform. So it can indeed affect a rotation. But if you look at this, what we observe is this force plus pointing right, this force plus pointing left, the effect was to cause a rotation in clockwise direction. But what did we observe when I was standing on the platform and tilting the wheel in the way that I just tilted this wheel, I turned in counterclockwise direction in this direction. How is this possible? Well, this is actually all due to Newton's third law, the law of action and reaction. So the forces that I am exerting on this wheel, which are causing the change of velocity of the points on the wheel, are countered by forces that the wheel is exerting on me, the reaction forces. And these reaction forces are what is causing me to change my, my orientation because they point in the other direction. So, the gyroscopic effect in fast spinning wheels consists of a moment that is induced about an axis that's perpendicular to the spinning axis and to the second axis that we force the wheel to also rotate about. Let's look at another example of the gyroscopic effect, namely the spinning top. Let's look at the situation where this top is not so much upright anymore, but has already uh, tilted it a little bit, so it's almost touching the ground, because then it's easier to see the different axes. If there isn't much friction, then there's actually just two forces acting on this top, namely gravity trying to pull it down, and the force from the table that's keeping it from sinking through the ground. So again, we have something like a couple of forces that you think would make the top fall down. But observe, while spinning, it's not falling, but it is also performing a second rotation about the vertical axis. So we have a spinning axis and we have a second rotation about the vertical axis, which is also called the precession axis. And we know that there has to be a gyroscopic moment generating this movement. And this moment must be about an axis that's perpendicular to the first two. Well, so perpendicular to the spinning axis and perpendicular to the vertical axis. And which axis is perpendicular to the two? 
exactly the axis where we would expect the top to fall over, also called the mutation axis. And we see that gravity is causing a moment about this axis. So this moment, instead of making the top fall, is causing the precession about the vertical. Again, just a change of direction, like in the moon example. So why is this useful? We use this gyroscopic effect to help people who have problems walking or particularly balancing. So we try to use this moment, this reaction moment, the gyroscopic reaction moment to create an uprighting effect on people who are losing their balance. So here you see an, an animation where we see two spinning wheels and we force them to change their orientation using motors. They are forced to rotate about an axis that is not the spinning axis. So we know that the gyroscopic reaction torque must occur, which is exerted on the person about an axis perpendicular to the spinning axis and to the vertical axis. And this gyroscopic effect can give people extra time to recover. It's like two giant fidget spinners in a backpack. Now what did we do? We built a hardware prototype of this and we were very surprised by the big effect it had on people's balance. So we did a test on healthy people, including healthy elderly. We had them walk on a thin beam and we just measured how far they could walk on this beam. This is very difficult. And we did this in different conditions. We had them do it with the backpack worn but switched off and with the backpack switched on. And when it was switched on, it was actually trying to help them uh, keep their balance. And what we noticed is that everybody in the study was better at balancing, which means they could walk more easily to watch the end of the beam. So it looked like we gave super human skills to healthy people. But well, this isn't really the goal. What we want to do is help people with balance impairments. So we did another experiment where we challenged the balance of stroke survivors. So we had them balance on very thin pieces of wood, again, without the device and with the device, and we measured how long they could actually stand on this, on this piece of wood. And the longer they could balance, the better, of course. What we noticed is that once we switch on the backpack, many people or everybody could balance longer and some people even a lot longer. What are we doing now? We are working on better prototypes, much lighter, much simpler to help people uh, recover and hopefully we, they become, can become products that make it easier for people who have balance impairments or fear of falling. These systems could become alternatives to walkers, which can be stigmatizing and also a hassle when you try to navigate stairs with them. In a backpack, possibly nobody will even notice that this is an eight. In our newest version, we have gyroscopic actuators about the size of a pint or a mango, so they fit easily into a backpack. And hopefully in the future, a company will make this available to consumers in the form of a product. So, to conclude, why do tops not fall over? It's all due to Newton's second law, changing the velocity of fast moving point masses, but especially changing the direction of velocity. In a spinning top, gravity does change the velocity of points in the top, but because these points move so fast, the top will precess, rotate about the vertical instead of fall. We can exploit the gyroscopic effect by forcing fast spinning wheels to change their orientation, and we can put this in a backpack. That way we get these very unintuitive gyroscopic moments, but these reaction moments are very helpful to help people balance. Thank you very much for watching.